All right, Annie, why don't you go ahead and tell us what the mission is of Kentucky Anna Pug Rescue. Okay. Well, Kentucky Anna Pug Rescue was founded several years ago with the concept in mind that there are a lot of lost, surrendered, abandoned, discarded pugs out there that need help in getting rehomed. Mm -hmm. So the organization started out, and initially in the beginning, it was so slow and so small and so limited, they actually went looking for pugs to bring into the rescue. Now at this time, we don't have that problem, unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, I'm not really sure how to look that's been. But regardless, our mission is to get every pug we can that needs us into a safe, happy, healthy environment forever. And we like to call them forever homes. And how many, uh, how many pugs are currently in Kentucky in a pug rescue? Well, sadly, right now we have over 100 in foster care. Many of them need medical require, required medical needs that are ongoing. We have several in hospice care that will never make it to our website. Um, it's sad to say, but it's a fact of life. Nobody wants to adopt a dying pug. You know, thank God we have terrific foster homes that are willing to give of their hearts and their homes, knowing what the end result's going to be for that handful of pugs that are in our care. But, but basically right now, a little over 100 right now. Where do they all come from? Well, you know, that's the question we get asked more often than not. Um, I'd say probably 25% come in from being strays. So we get them from shelters, animal controls, humane societies, that kind of a setting. 35% uh, to 45% right now I attribute directly to the foreclosure crisis in America. We have an awful lot of people contacting us saying, I can no longer take care of my dog because I have to move and go into living. You know, adult people with grown, you know, half-grown children moving in with their grown parents. Parents are willing to take mom and dad and the two 12-year-old twins, but they can't handle the three dogs too. So we're getting turned in an awful lot of hugs from situations like that, in addition to the you know, boss my dog, we've had a few that have gone into the military, nobody in the family would be willing to take the dog, and then we have the typical percentage that comes in from, you know, grandma passed away, nobody wants grandma's dog, um, somebody gets divorced, you know, that kind of thing. And then sadly, we get the abuse cases too. We have some that have come into us that have been thrown from a car window. We have some that have been neglected and left in an apartment for three and four weeks at a time, which is also, I guess, somewhat attributed to the financial crisis in America because what's happening is they're abandoning their animals inside the home because they don't have the guts to go to a shelter or the courage, I should say, maybe. Because for some people, I think it is just a whole fear factor that they're going to be looked down upon. But that's about the rounded version of where we get everybody from. And uh, in order to continue, what exactly does Kentucky and a pug rescue currently need? Money and people. I mean, it's the bottom line. It's the bottom line. The more people we have that work with KPR, the more pugs we can take in. The more people we have, the more pugs we take in, the more people we can connect with, the more events we can hold, the more fundraisers we can have, the more people we can get to donate, and then we can take in more pugs. People, 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 money, money, money. It sounds terribly silly, but that is the bottom line. It's a huge, big wheel, and every one of those people is a spoke in that wheel, and every dime that comes into our rescue is a spoke in that wheel, and without both those things, we can't continue. The more we have, the better, the bigger, the stronger we get, and the more pegs we're able to help and get into a forever loving home. Sounds good. Back to you, Skip.